In just a few short weeks, the movie adaptation of the first of Cassandra's books will be hitting theaters, and the cast and the author and the director of the Mortal Instruments, City of Bones, are ready to hit the stage. So let's bring them out. Guys, give a warm welcome for the director of City of Bones, Harold Zwartz, coming out from right over there, and he's got a big camera in his hand, too. <laughs> Smile, say cheese for Harold, everyone. Say cheese. The man who likes to get the party started playing Magnus Bane, Godfrey Gow's coming out from right over there. <laughs> he plays Alec Whitewood and he is Kevin Zegers. Give it up for Kevin. <laughs> playing Simon Lewis, we have Robert Sheehan is coming out. Right there, stage left. And the one and only Jace Wayland is the one and only Jamie Campbell Bauer, right over there. Please give a warm Hall H welcome to the author of The Mortal Instruments, Cassandra Clare. And playing Clary Frey, a little old someone that goes by the name of Lily Collins, ladies and gentlemen. Coming out right over there. All right. Look at these gentlemen waiting for them to take a seat, huh? Aww. They say chivalry is dead. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank and welcome you. to all of you guys. This will be great. Uh, let's jump right into it. Lily, starting with you. Uh, one of the things I think that makes these books really resonate with readers is the fact that Clary is such a, a strong female character. Um, how attractive was this role for you, you know, in the sense that you're playing someone who's not only being introduced to this new world, but she's sort of in a very short manner of time, uh, is really able to handle herself so well and acclimate herself to that world. Um, what I loved about Clary so much is the fact that um, she's after finding her mom this entire movie, and the romance comes into the story, drama, comedy, but she has a very um, single-tracked mind throughout this entire movie of finding her mom, and she's tenacious, and she's courageous, and she's thrown these crazy twists and turns throughout the story, but she never is weak, and she always comes out of it the other side, and she meets these amazing people along the way that help her do that, but she always finds her own voice within each situation. Because I know you were a fan of the books before you even cast, so yeah. it must be really exciting to play this character that you read about and just sort of incorporate it. Yeah, I was a fan of the books before I was cast, and to be a fan cast as a literary heroine that I admired was a dream come true, and to have Cassandra sign off on me um, as her red-headed heroine <laughs> was a total honor, yeah. Uh, switching from one side of the panel to the other with Harold, the director, it's always the question sort of when a movie is adapted from a book, you know, how true are you going to remain to the source material? And some, you know, if you take like The Walking Dead, which really veers very, very far away, and then you have sort of Harry Potter, which stays closer. What was it like when you first decided, when you took it on in terms of deciding, well, we might make some changes here, but we also want to make sure we keep this really true? Well, the uh, source material is pretty great. You know, there wasn't, we didn't need to change uh, anything really. I think what was uh, the hardest part was to compress it down to a reasonable movie length and making the choices of what to keep and what not to keep and how could we make shortcuts and still have a consistent story even though we had to take some things out. But it was great. Uh, you know, I was working closely with Cassandra on a, uh, on a lot of it and um, she was very helpful. So it was a, a smooth sailing. Uh, Cassandra, as you uh, rehydrate there, up here on the Comic-Con stage, it's important. It's been it a is. long day, a lot of interviews, a lot of signings. But, uh, you know, Harold just talked about that. Some, some writers, when their films are adapted for movies or TV, some one, people are very involved. Some people don't want to be involved. Some people are sort of somewhat... Where, what was your sort of role here? I, I wanted to be involved. I was pretty interfery. Um, you know, they, they were like, would you like to be involved in casting? And I was like, would I... I like a gold-bladed Ferrari. Yes, I would like to be involved. 
I would like to be involved with everything, so there really was almost nothing where I didn't bug Harold about the costumes or the sets or the casting or the story at one level or another. Um, and I really, I mean, uh, it was a very sort of group process because he was sort of introducing me to how you make a movie, and I was talking to him about, you know, the stories and where they went in the future and how things in this movie would affect the story down the road, and it was very collaborative. Yeah. Uh, Jamie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 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 <laughs> Woo you are an arrogant bastard, sir. Thank when I say you, very you much. are an arrogant Thank bastard. Thank you so much. I'm talking about your character. <laughs> oh, right. I and see. you, of course. Okay. No, your character. <laughs> Uh, Jace is pretty arrogant in the books. He's a guy that has a definite attitude. He's walking around with a tood. Uh, he's throwing a little tood off over at uh, Clary. I mean, how much of that's going to translate on screen, what we've seen from him in the books? Yeah, I played him as a sassy bitch. I really <laughs> did. Uh, no, I mean, I think in the books, you know, obviously we have the, you have the availability to explore a character over, you know, hundreds of pages. You know, with the, with the movie, we, we have to condense that. Um, and what stuck out for me about Jace was this vulnerability that he has, and I've said this a lot, but it's true, so I'll say it again. Um, <laughs> so he has this vulnerability about him, and that's why he sort of puts on this facade of this cockiness or this self-awareness, this self-assuredness, and he lets that down. He lets his guard down with Lily, I mean, <laughs> with Clary. Jeez. Um, <laughs> with Clary. And, um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, for him, that's, that's his... That's, that's his bag, and I did. I made him really grumpy quite a lot of the time, but he needed to be grumpy in order for you to feel for him later on in the story. Um, Robert, you have some experience in sort of supernatural projects. You're no s stranger. <laughs> <laughs> this guy knows immortality. Wow. I might take my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I might just take my shirt off. That's right. You know immortality from The Misfits. So how does sort of the downworlders here differ from the characters uh, in that show? God, well, I mean, in the, in the characters in Misfits, uh, when they all get cursed with these superpowers, they kind of, the, the superpowers were more like extensions of their own insecurity. You know, so they, they came very much from within them, whereas the downworlder characters are, are they're kind of part demon, part human. They're a mix of the two, and they've learned to live peacefully with people, and so they've... Um, so, yeah, so the, the, the superpowers and the, uh, the demonic aspects of the characters in Mortal Instruments differ greatly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Kevin? Uh-huh. We, uh, <laughs> we, we learn a lot about your character, Alec, throughout the books. A lot of stuff happens with him, a lot of good stuff, some not-so-good stuff. Um, how much did you peek ahead? and sort of see what happens later, and if you did peek ahead, because you're a big cheater, how did you in either include... Don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> They're allowed you... to read ahead, you know. Yeah, you're allowed to read it, but how much, but how much do you sort of include or exclude that stuff, that what you know, when playing him for this movie, from this book? Well, I mean, I think we all were on the same page, which, you know... The the main focus when we when I certainly when I spoke to Harold was you know we were making we were making one film so uh, in order you can start and it can really inhibit your ability to you know you can get ahead of yourself and and reveal things that are not meant to be revealed until much later and you know fortunately I th it sounds like we're going to be able to make uh, at least one more of these so um, but you know I, I I I tried at least to just sort of you know, you try to create a character and, and uh, not look too far ahead and not make any assumptions about him. I mean, there's o the obvious uh, thing with his sexuality, and, and obviously that's revealed throughout the, the series of the novels, but, um, you know, that was something I considered, but it, it wasn't something that we, uh, you know, you, we were just making a movie. We tried not to get too overwhelmed with the expectation of the entire series. And you know, just started off by telling it, telling a great story. And I, I, I loved the character of Alec from the time I read the script. I really felt uh, an affinity towards him. And and it was especially for a, a film of this sort of magnitude. I I was super impressed that there was uh, that Cassie was able to write a character that had all this stuff going on, and uh, and that he's still you know he's still kind of a badass. Yeah, Godfrey Gow. Let's talk to the High Warlock of Brooklyn for a second. Hello, everybody. 
He took his pants off. Welcome to my party. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, how do the parties at Comic Con measure up? Because you know a good party when you when you see one or throw one in this case. Yeah, this is definitely you no know, Magnus Bane's caliber. You know, all <laughs> all these people here. It's crazy. <laughs> 